iOS comes with a number of options for generating haptic feedback, and they're all available for us to use in SwiftUI. In its simplest form, this is as simple as creating an instance of one of the subclasses of UI Feedback Generator, then calling its Play method. But for more precise control over feedback, you should first call its Prepare method to give the Taptic Engine chance to warm up. Now this is important. Warming up the Taptic Engine helps reduce the latency between us calling Play and the effect actually happening. But it also has a battery impact, so the system will only stay ready for a second or two after you call Prepare. Now there are a few different subclasses of UI Feedback Generator, but the one we'll use here is called UI Notification Feedback Generator because it provides success and failure haptics that are common across iOS. Now we could add one central instance of UI Notification Feedback Generator to every content view, but that causes a problem. Content view gets notified whenever a car has been removed, but isn't notified when a drag is in progress, which means we don't have the chance to warm up the Taptic Engine. So instead we're going to give each card view its own instance of UI Notification Feedback Generator, so they can prepare and play them as needed. The system will take care of making sure all haptics are neatly arranged, so there's no chance of them somehow getting confused. First, add this new property to card view. At state, private var, feedback, equals, UI notification feedback generator. Now find the self.removal line in the drag gesture of card view, and change that whole closure to this. If self, offset width is greater than zero, self.feedback.notification occurred dot success. Else, we'll do notification occurred dot error, and then call our removal closure. That alone is enough to get haptics in our app, but there's always the risk the haptic will be delayed because the taptic engine wasn't ready. In this case, the haptic will still play, but it could be up to maybe half a second late enough to feel just that little bit disconnected from our user interface. To improve this, we need to call prepare on our haptic a little before calling play. It is not enough to call prepare immediately before play. Doing so does not give the taptic engine enough time to warm up, so you won't see any reduction in latency. Instead, you should call prepare as soon as you know the haptic might be needed. Now there are two helpful implementation details you should be aware of. First, it's okay to call prepare, then never call play. The system will keep the Taptic Engine ready for a few seconds, then just power it down again. If you repeatedly call prepare and never call play, the system might start ignoring your prepare calls until at least one play has happened. Second, it's perfectly allowable to call prepare many times before calling play once. Prepare doesn't pause your app while the engine warms up, and also doesn't have any real performance cost when the system's already prepared. Putting these two together, we're going to update our drag gesture so prepare is called whenever the gesture changes. This means it could be called 100 times before play is finally called, because it'll get triggered every time the user moves their finger. So, modify your on change closure to this, self.feedback.prepare. Now go ahead and give the app a try and see what you think. You should be able to feel two very different haptics depending on which direction you swipe. Before we wrap up with haptics, there's one thing I want you to consider. Years ago, PepsiCo challenged mall choppers to the Pepsi challenge. Drink a sip of one colored drink and a sip of another and see which you prefer. The results found that more Americans preferred Pepsi than Coca-Cola, despite Coke having a much bigger market share. However, there was a problem. People seemed to pick Pepsi in the test because Pepsi had a sweeter taste. And while that worked well in sip size amounts, it worked less well in the sizes of cans and bottles, where people actually preferred Coke. The reason I'm saying this is because we added two haptic notifications to our app. They'll get played a lot. And while you're testing out in small doses, these haptics probably feel great. You're making your phone buzz, and it can be really delightful. However, if you're a serious user of this app, then our haptics might hit two problems. First, the user might find them annoying, because they'll happen once every two or three seconds, depending on how fast they are. And second, the user might become desensitized to them. They lose all usefulness, either as a notification, or as a little spark of delight. So now you've tried it for yourself, I want you to think about how this should be used. 
if this were my app, I'd probably keep the failure haptic, but I think the success haptic could go. That one's likely to be triggered the most often, and it means when the failure haptic plays, it feels a little more special.